Yeah, there you go. You're ready to go. Excellent. Thanks, man. Cool. So hi, everybody. As Mark mentioned, my name is Jordan, and I'm covering a tertiary education provider called Stadio in South Africa. Stadio is essentially one of three main tertiary education guys in South Africa, and uh, it's split between roughly 80% distance, 20% contact learning, and it's focused on university students here. So they are have an anchor shareholder in PSG, and they are a spin-out of a group called Curro. Now, Curro and PSG are kind of um, very, very well connected in the industry, and they are both old hat in the industry as well. PSG, in terms of South African asset management, has been around for a long time. Uh, Well-respected guys, you can think of them as like the Berkshire Hathaway of South Africa. And then Curro is a probably the leading private junior school. Curro, over time, developed... was and you can see here in the bottom the, the share price kind of it's really shot up initially because at the time there was a lot of positive sentiments around Curro um, and the management there is generally just very well regarded guys and uh, if you think about the model Curro has a lot of operating leverage Stadio was expected to have the same thing however the growth rate didn't quite materialize as kind of expected and then along with the broader disinterest in South African kind of mid to micro caps, there's been a lot of selling pressure on the, over the last couple of years, both as investors offshore have left, um, as well as investors locally kind of became a little bit disenamored with the Curro and the Stadia um, kind of growth rates. That's not to say they haven't grown, they've done pretty well. And over the last three years, Largely, the fundamentals have kind of caught up to where the share price was expecting them to be, but the market hasn't quite taken an awareness of this yet. Now, just speaking to Stadio quickly, um, you can see on the screen, lowest cost, owner-operated, and a nice touch there, dedicate 1% to 3% of revenue to scholarships for their students, which is pretty cool. Smallest company um, at 2.5 billion rand, which is like roughly $180 million. Now, as I mentioned, okay, I've spoken to a lot of this, listed in 2017, spin out of Curro. Um, I've said here that they're, they're one of three distance learning higher education institutions. And that's quite important because you'll see later, I'll dive into it. The South African market is pretty tough to develop a competitor. There's big barriers to entry, mostly regulatory, whatnot. Um, it takes a lot of time to register a course and there's high capex costs if you want to go for the brick and mortar model. Um, these three guys, Advertech is much like Stadio in the sense that they're private and they've had great growth rates and really fantastic company. Um, UNISA is government funded. And I'll show you later on just in terms of the difference between the government subsidies and the private guys. The private guys have much leaner models relative to the South African government subsidies. For those who don't know, I know we've got a lot of international guys watching. The South African government is um, really probably not the best in terms of bureaucracy. They are, there's a lot of fund mismanagement, a lot of um, red tape that gets caught up when they, despite allocating a lot of money to the education sector, never actually executed properly. So back to Stadio, um, a lot of their growth previously has been from M&A. They came onto the scene in 2017 and just started buying up a lot of little competitors in the space. Uh, guys with established name brands, reputable degree offerings, and they wanted to get themselves onto the scene as quickly as possible. Now, the reason that they did that, according to their founders, largely because it takes a lot of time to build up the um, both the credibility of your name as well as the regulatory um, constraints around coming up with actual degrees and programs and diplomas and whatnot. So this allowed them to get customers at scale faster. They've since decided that they're going to move from this. And so this is why I'm presenting them today. They've mentioned that they're going to start merging their schools into one multiversity. That's the term that they use. And it's essentially just bringing out all of the uh, other little acquiries under the one Stadio brand. So quick facts and stats on the company. Um, you can see they've had pretty fantastic growth rates. Large, that largely is M&A driven. They still got a very small percentage of market share relative to uh, the other players. And 
fantastic growth rates. You can see in the bottom left, the, um, the recent last 12 months, they've had a once-off write down. So that's why it looks so shocking in terms of a negative 273% uh, drop. But it, that is more of a, an accounting adjustment than anything else. One interesting thing to note is the growth in cash flow. Um, they have been incredibly cash generative despite being such an early stage business. And then lastly, just in terms of their balance sheet, uh, very, very strong, resilient guys, not very likely to require CapEx going forward. Now, in, that, in a nutshell, the thesis is um, it's a growth at reasonable price thesis. There's expectation as they progress through the J-curve that both the operating leverage and the uh, margins will increase with just the platform dynamics of having more students on one platform. There's massive, massive market with, as I mentioned, incredible structural barriers. Lack of company, founder-led, capital-like growth. Uh, at this point, they've really spent all of the spending that's going to be required to acquire these little guys, as well as to kind of develop the infrastructure for the platform. So CapEx going on will less likely be um, acquisitional. It'll far more be to the platform development, which is quite nice. It just enhances the user experience and whatnot. This is something that's particularly come up post-COVID. They've been focused quite a bit on bringing in users because they are a better brand uh, and have a better experience than traditional unis, which can't quite cater for the distance education aspect. Now, um, you'll see at the top there, growth in line with management expectations with no multiple change generates a six-year IRR of 27%. Management has been fantastic at meeting their growth targets, and they set out all these growth targets in their prospectus in 2015. Sorry, 2016, uh, just pre the listing in 2017. And to date, they've kind of tracked it or exceeded the, each, each target that they've set. Now, they've set the target of, I think it's 100,000 students by 2026. Uh, and by all accounts, they look quite set to meet that. If they do, then the net income they generate from those students trading at existing multiples gives you a market cap that's several times larger than what it is currently. And that's where the six-year IRR of 27% comes out. Now, just mentioning the expectations versus reality, this here is the number of students. The light green you'll see is the expectation from the management in the beginning. And the dark green is how they actually have performed. So you can see that they've quite outperformed in most cases, both in terms of student enrollment and revenue, earnings, and EBITDA. Uh, earnings a little bit slipped because of COVID. Now, um, that earnings that I've put there on the screen is the adjusted earnings. If you take out the one source, it's kind of just the core earnings of the business. I think <clears throat> accounting wise, obviously it's a different factor. So just want to note though, that these last two have been during COVID. Over 2020, um, they have not grown as well as I think they have in the previous years. Largely that's because of COVID. They've also been doing a lot of these acquisitions of these smaller guys who are um, these smaller guys will market specifically to your corporates in terms of getting corporate guys trained up, skilled up in a degree that they want while studying part-time and working full-time. That's a lot of their niche segment. Um, because of obviously COVID, there has been a lot of a pullback from the corporates to say, okay, cool, we'll keep funding our employees. That's understandable. And so that's where a lot of the drop in expected earnings has come from. Now, one more comment. I mean, you'll probably have to squint to see the slide, but in a nutshell, this is just a comparison of the different margins and the returns on capital that Stadio will generate relative to international peers and relative to the red one is Advertech, it's private competitor locally. You can see here that it's just orders of magnitude lower than international guys with the same business model. Now, the reason why I put the slide in is because I think that there's prospects for a drastic improvement over time, both in the margins and in the returns, given the nature of the business model. Stadio is much more early stage than a lot of these more established offshore guys. And I know that the markets are very different, but it speaks to the, um, the prowess of the business model that some of these other guys have been able to generate these returns and same kind of profitability. I've also compared here Advertech, which is their primary competitor, just so that you can kind of see Advertech is a little bit more developed uh, further down the S-curve, if you will, but they've also got a very big part of their business that is uh, brick and mortar. Where Stadio, uh, as I mentioned, is maybe 20% brick and mortar. 
Advertech has their entire primary segment, which is also brick and mortar. So that kind of puts a dampen on the returns and profitability prospects. So why would I say the company is undervalued? Um, in the first place, I think if you look at it relative to the rest of South Africa, it's not clear that it is undervalued. There's, I mean, it's trading at a sales multiple, double, sometimes triple what the average South African company is. Um, there's about 15% expected growth rate baked into the price already, and it's already at a premium to Advertech. So why am I saying it's undervalued? Uh, and beyond that, if it is undervalued, then there's probably decent reasons for why the market's viewing it like that. One of which could be the uncertainty around the acquisition spree. I think that there's a arm's lengthness towards it that investors are facing and the complex financials as well. In the last little while, as I mentioned, there's been a couple of write downs and one offs here and there that have kind of obscured the actual underlying growth. Beyond that, there's general disinterest in South Africa broadly, uh, has been for the last five years. So microcap investors in SA have had a tough time of it. And that's starting to change now. We're starting to see a little bit more sell side interest, invest interest broadly. Um, but that might have been a reason for the sell off in the last couple of slides that I showed you. And finally, I think the biggest reason though is uncertainty around the consolidation into stadium multiversity. Despite the fact that they had just gone on this acquisition spree, now you have them combining this into quite an unknown concept and it's not really market tested yet. So we will have to see how that goes. And that may be one of the reasons why the market is a little bit skittish. Speaking to the context around um, South African tertiary education. So you can see here, just on the top, there's a couple of facts and stats around South Africa generally. Sorry, this is Sub-Saharan Africa generally. Um, very, very young population, very fostly urbanizing population as well. And quite a bit of an increase in spending power that's both expected and has been there over the last like five, 10 years. Broadly speaking, we've developed quite a bit as a region. And that obviously falls right down. As a region grows in spending power and urbanizes, a lot of its youth starts to get into the universities, um, both within like immediate school leavers level and within a young working and wanting to study further level. This little graph at the bottom of the pie chart is essentially a, it's a little TAM analysis where you can see that Stadios and Advertech are both roughly 1% of the total market. Uh, the green ones are the ones that are traditional universities and UNISA. Now, this is quite an important graph because it shows you how much structural undersupply there is relative to the prospects. Um, traditional universities are completely constrained. They really cannot grow much further at this point. And the government has poured funding there, but there just hasn't been the kind of management of the funds that enables the growth. And UNISA is also at max capacity. It's going to be really hard for them to expand as much as um, Advertech and Stadio. Now, there are some other guys playing, but that's a very fragmented market. If anything, I would say it possibly offers more M&A activity. But in the meantime, Stadio and Advertech have both said they're not particularly interested in M&A going forward. They want to develop their internal products. So <clears throat> I spoke earlier to the like why the market is so um, structurally undersupplied. For a large portion of it, there's not much more funding that's going to come to the tertiary guys who are already in the space. The public universities, they have, um, you can see on this graph here, the blue is the grants that they get. In terms of their, their total revenue, blue is government subsidies, green is tuition fees, and orange is mostly alumni funding. It's just, it is drastically, drastically funded by alumni and the uh, government. There's not much of it that comes from fees. Now, these obviously exclude the private university guys. Those guys are majority, majority uh, tuition fees. So there's kind of a limitation here towards the growth prospects that these other universities face. And you have the large TAM as it is. Saying that, um, why do I believe Stadio over Advertech and over the other smaller competitors? Stadio is very low cost. Um, this is a graph of your average BCom annual fees, which is just a business degree in South Africa. And you can see there that in both instances, Stadio is uh, cheaper for the average guy than another university from either UNISA or from um, an in-person university. But it is, it's cheaper than 
Advertech as far as um, contact learning goes, it is roughly similarly priced in terms of <coughs> excuse me in terms of distance learning. Now, this is just one degree, but it is representative of the overall sample. I think one kind of niche that steady your heads quite nicely in South Africa is the missing middle people who are too rich for government subsidies, but they don't have enough money to or sorry they don't have enough grades to get the um, the scholarships that will accompany either high achievers or, as I mentioned, the government subsidies. One other advantage for Stadio is they've got a much more lean business model than a lot of the traditional universities and then Advertech actually. They've got very streamlined operations and the guys are quite, uh, they're quite shrewd with their money management. If you go and you look at their offices, it's like uh, really bare bones stuff. They're not overly fancy. Um, very simplistic things you would expect from a founder-led business. Now, one other aspect that I quite like about them is they are really engaging with students as far as um, the working world goes. They speak to businesses on the one hand and they kind of solicit requirements for degrees and then they develop these degrees and present them to students. That is a fundamentally different model from the academic-driven one of universities at the moment. And I think it has nice growth prospects in South Africa. So summarize um, structural demand that's unlikely to go away and the universities that are in place won't really be able to grow to meet that demand. So I'm going to have to hurry. I think I'm a little bit pressed for time here, but um, in terms of where they are in the business cycle, I think that Stadio is quite early stage still, uh, very, very young. I mean, it's really only three years since listing, roughly five years since it started and it started roughly 2015. Um, and so to be cash generative and at scale for where they are, I think is a pretty remarkable achievement that the market's quite not pricing in. Now, quick little framework around the quality of the business. Um, I mentioned it's founder led. It was founded by this one guy called Chris Van Amadwa. Chris is very reputable in the industry. He has since moved on, he's now on the board. There is another company that they acquired in the very early days which was founded by a man called Chris Foster. And Chris is the current CEO of Stadia. Now, um, in terms of the context, there are high barriers to entry and favorable economics just because of the supply demand mismatch. There's a massive term. Um, and because of the, the kind of two year plus requirement to certify a degree, it's not like that many players can just hop into the space and compete with them. Um, there's also large capex requirements, especially in the beginning. But now Stadia has quite a bit past that hurdle. I think something else that is quite interesting is in terms of pricing power, education prices have historically increased roughly at inflation, which in South Africa is about 6% per year, plus four. So you've got about 10% per year price increases. Um, that's, that's quite strong as far as business economics go. There's also the leanable, scalable platform model, which I mentioned, and the fact that they've got quite niche brands under their little stable. Um, they are the owners of the leading marketing and uh, dramatic arts business in South Africa or school in South Africa. And they've got a lot of niche business guys as well, which address the kind of the market of school leavers, sorry, work people who want to study, not only the school leavers. Then lastly, how do they grow going forward? There's possibility for new programs, new degrees. Uh, system improvements, that's all pretty mandatory. And I expect that that will be their focus for the next couple of years. What is quite nice is also as they grow, there's a bit of a flywheel effect in place because they become a bit more reputable in the market. With the more brand ambassadors, quote unquote, that they have being alumni, um, the more reputable the industry gets over time. Lastly, because of the platform in place, uh, it, it does mean good steady state margins, more so than a traditional schooling model, which gives them an edge in terms of uh, Advertech doesn't have that same advantage. So how have they grown in the past? Um, I did show a similar slide earlier, but it's roughly 83% per year, which has been insane. Uh, the vast majority of that came in 2018 from 2017. Since then, growth has been around maybe 20% per year, um, mostly in revenue. If you're looking to the others, kind of net, net profit, uh, operating profit, these things, it has lagged a little bit. And that's largely got to do with the reinvestment that they've been undergoing. So where do they go forward? Um, it is internal things, developing the systems, 
setting the platforms, and then they're aiming for international integration at a later point. I think it will be really nice for them to start pairing up with offshore universities doing exchanges. That'll lend quite a bit of credibility. And there's also a push towards academia inside. They've got um, a lot of money that's allocated towards developing kind of the higher tier, your PhDs, your master's students, and uh, funding the requirements for that, which obviously more specific requirements like your, your different machines for your engineering students and whatnot. Now, in terms of valuation, as I mentioned, uh, roughly three times EV to sales. Average is also roughly three, so it's not deeply underpriced relative to its prior pricing. Um, EBITDA, I think what you're seeing now is they've started to become a little bit more profitable. And because of that, um, the EBITDA multiple is kind of, it, it looks a little bit more appealing now. I still wouldn't say that they are historically much better off than they have been in the past. Um, this just more paints a picture for where they are. Then an interesting one here is if you look at them relative to peers, um, they're more expensive than Advertech by quite a bit, which is the red. Stadio is the blue in this graph. And they're quite a bit cheaper than international guys. The yellow one is uh, just an international company to give you reference points. Similar model. Doing a rough kind of discount cash flow calculation with the best case being that they meet management's expectations, which I think is conservative because they have done that quite nicely in the past and the tailwinds are in place. Um, the base case being a growth rate of half of management's expectations and worst case being about 5% growth per year. Then you land in a space with them being valued anywhere between kind of five rand to like 15 rand, um, depending on the different terminal values that you use and the discount rates and whatnot. That is still nearly double the current valuation of roughly, I think it's like two rand 90 at this point. So what are the risks to the business? Um, it is CapEx heavy in the beginning and there's potential for kind of mismanagement of capital going forward as they integrate these guys into the Stadio Multiversity. They have been building up a contact learning place there. It's possible that there's a little bit of a mismarketing risk. Um, the market doesn't quite take to it as nicely as they thought they would. And that would be a very, in my head, the most substantial risk. Then there's also overcapacity risk, which is the same in the same vein. Um, they over cater and don't meet the growth rates. I think there's also the South African economy risk. Um, on the one hand, it's, we've got a nice kind of commodity boom going on at the moment and South Africa is quite levered to the commodity cycle. But um, on the other hand, we have had pretty poor performance in the last five years. And so South Africa, in terms of the broader country, is not in the best space, which means any deterioration there and Stadia takes a little bit of a knock. Um, lastly, I think there's also the risk of international competition coming in. Because there's lower barriers to entry than brick and mortar universities, um, it's more possible for guys like Harvard to come in and offer a different um, a different offering here, even if it's not the same like South African accredited, to get a Harvard accredited one is a decent enough comparison. Now, um, I think there's also a bit of commoditization that's happening at kind of the lower rung of their service offering, where you're seeing guys like Udemy and Khan Academy and all of these people who are addressing businessmen who are wanting to upskill themselves without necessarily getting the certification. And I think that's also taking a little bit away from the potential market share for, um, for Stadio. But if you jump back to that, that slide that I showed you in your heads with the TAM graph, um, there's such a massive market share that there's, it's able to be kind of chipped away at the top and bottom without, I think, Stadio facing much, too much pressure at this point. So Mark, I think that's everything from me in terms of a presentation of any questions. Uh, not as yet, but I think a bit like Luke, I, I might have to get the ball rolling here. Uh, and just for people who don't know, I'm also based in South Africa. And just maybe something to re reiterate what Jordan was saying about the capacity constraints. The, the local university where I am here in town, they, I think they had like 40,000 applicants for first year students this year. But they only accepted, uh, I think, four and a half thousand out of that 40,000. So, you know, that's 36,000 students who apply. Now, not all of them 
would have maybe got the grades to to get into particular courses, but it does, I think, give a little anecdotal point to the demand for third level uh, education and where uh, the opportunity is for Stadio. Uh, one question I had was, are they trying to, in this multiversity model, are they trying to cover all your traditional schools that you would get at a normal university, Jordan? Are they focusing on, you know, business degrees or technology and science or, you know, more focused on the arts? Um, maybe just talk to that, like, are they focusing on a, two or three particular areas or are they really trying to put themselves out as a, you know, a full service university that um, most people would be accustomed to? Sure, Mark. No, that's a great question, man. Um, look, ultimately, they, I think, are wanting to go down the full service route. But at the moment, the way that they've positioned themselves, they've just taken up acquisitionally a lot of the business-oriented brands, as well as the far more niche ones, like I mentioned after earlier, which is the leading South African dramatic arts company, or it's a company slash university slash technicon thing. And so they've positioned themselves pretty much in the niche brands. Um, but with the trajectory going towards more full service offerings. I think they've recently put out a couple of STEM degrees. Um, as of the last last year, I think they, they've started pushing into the STEM fields a little bit more. I think they've got some engineering offerings and a couple of BSCs as well. And then a question, the, the distance learning platform, it's cloud-based, correct? I must be honest, I would presume so. I don't actually know. I feel like um, I'd be very surprised if it's not cloud-based, but that is something I can check and get back to you on. Okay, great. And then an, another one from me, the, the ability to expand, you know, a lot of South African companies, you know, they're always looking up north to uh, expand into Africa. Could you see them you know, buying up local competitors um, internationally to try and make it a, a more uh, whole of Africa play? Or do you think that's a, a ways down the line at this point? Are you speaking, um, when you say internationally, just kind of pushing into sub-Saharan Africa and upwards? Or yeah, so like they like move into Kenya, Botswana, Nigeria. Yeah. Look, it's tough. Eh? I think those are very different markets um, and it's not the kind of base of operations that the stadium management team are used to. Ultimately, sure, very likely. I think they're probably one of the better positioned people to do it. But um, that's kind of been the strategy that Advertech has taken over the last five, 10 years. And it hasn't worked out so well for them. Um, just because, because you don't understand the market so well, you don't have the same kind of regulatory expertise. You don't have the same relationships. Um, it, it often backfires a little bit. And we've seen that in Advertech's case, just the mismanagement of capital because of that has been quite strong and it's worn on their results a little bit. And for me, that's one of the reasons why I think Stadio is a better bet than Advertech overall. And then maybe we'll squeeze in this last final question before we hand over to Lucas. Um, gross margins in this business. Um, I know they've got a bit of contact and, uh, and uh, you know, the online platform business, but on a kind of a blended basis, what, what do, are you expecting from them in the next few years? Pretty high. I think um, on a blended basis, obviously the platform is quite a bit higher. And so the, the more that they have distance than they do uh, contact, obviously makes quite a difference. But I think you're looking at maybe she's blended. Um, or you can split it out sector 60. by sector. No, or maybe I think 60% 60, 60 depending on the split roughly. Okay, 60. Okay, great. Okay, Jordan, we're just pushing up on time. So I'm going to, I'm going to leave it there. Thank you very much uh, for your Thanks, presentation. Mark. And if you could stop sharing your screen.